I might be out to Lord God, creating me a clean heart, but renew some real thoughts inside of me. Because my thought life, I don't want this thing recorded. Amen. Stay with me. I'm almost there. So he's dealing with our character. He deals with our conversation, according to the text. He deals with our contemplation, which has to do with our thought life. And I, I, I close. Now watch this. Here's, here, here's, 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 here's the truth of this text. He says, for the book of Remembrance was written before him, for them that feared the Lord, he goes back to it, and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, said the Lord of hosts. In that day, I will make up my jewels and I will spare them. Now, uh, now watch this. I will make them like my jewels. Mm -hmm. Somebody say jewels. jewels. All right. So he says, he says, he says. Not only do I understand your thought life, your sorry. Not only do I understand the character. Not only do I understand your conversation recorded. I understand your contemplation. I got that recorded. He said, but here, Amen. Praise God. I'm going to make you a jewel. Let me let me say this about jewel because most of us, honestly, in this room, don't know what jewel. We don't know the importance of jewel. And the Bible uses various different metaphors, Minister Justin, in reference to the people of God. And one of those words used to refer to the people is that we are jewels of the kingdom. And there are many others, but let's just focus on jewel for a second. Um, and jewel is that precious, precious, amen, praise God, stone, amen, praise God, that costs something. Right. The value of that stone is is attached to what somebody else is willing to pay. Now stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. It, it's importance and value lies in what someone is willing to pay. Now watch this. Uh, now I, I had a little bit of experience with, with jewels. I had a little bit of experience. A little bit of experience. Uh, I, 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 when I was when I, I when I wanted to get married, I, I went to the jewel jewelry store where they sell jewels and they understand the value of jewels. And I saw a nice jewel and I said, "How much is that jewel? That's really really nice." And uh, they told me the retail price of the jewel and I. I looked and I said, how much is it? And they told me I almost had a heart attack. I picked myself up. I said, well, well put that one back. Yeah. So, so how much is that one? Because the jewels, amen, praise God, what was astonishing to me is that some of the smaller jewels had greater costs attached to it. Oh, have mercy. And some of the great big fat jewels, amen, praise God, was less costly. And I'm trying to figure this out. Uh, it looked like it should be the opposite. Mm -hmm. uh, just look at your neighbor real quick and say some of the jewels in church, mm -hmm. amen, praise God, that make all the noise are not necessarily the most precious. I wish I had a, a God, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. So here's what that, so then I had to ask the jeweler who understand jewels, like, explain to me. He says, well, he says, what you don't see is what is not always visible to the naked eye is that the sun jewels are of lower cost even though they're bigger because they have visible flaws. That's right. Ah. He said they have visible flaws. Yeah. And he says it's not always visible to the naked eye. But he says I being a jeweler have the ability to look past what your eyes can see. Lord have mercy. And I can determine what flaws, amen, are still valuable. He says, quite frankly, all jewels have a flaw. He says, but some flaws are more workable than others. I wish I had. And some flaws are not visible to the naked eye. I wish you had a church in here because because this this has hit my spirit. Because mm -hmm. all jewels have flaws, but the ones that we put in the showcase and raise the price tag on are those that are not visible to the naked eye. I want you to know that God is up to something in your life. He's up to something in your church. He's up to something in your ministry. He's up to something in you. But he's got to make sure that whatever your flaws are, is not visible to the naked eyes. It's not visible to the naked eyes. It's not visible to the naked eye. So he so I said, wait a minute, all jewels have a flaw? He says, all jewels have a flaw. He, he says, to find a perfect jewel is almost impossible. He says, but 
there are some flaws that are more workable. Not only is it more workable, he says there are some flaws that are worth the more. Mm -hmm. Now what is he trying to say? He said because it's not visible to the naked eye is that someone will pay more to acquire it. Now what does he say? Spiritually what God says to me in that, in the, in that analogy is that the devil is willing to attack you more than he is some other jewel because he's willing to pay more for you. Mm -hmm. God have mercy. Hey God. He's got to make sure that what is not visible to the naked eye never becomes visible. So what does he attack? He attacks your character. I wish I had a church in here tonight. He attacks your character. He make them lie about you. He make them talk about you. And sometimes they're not lying. They're telling the truth. But they're amplifying your flaws. And when they're amplifying your flaws, they just move to the devil's peril. If you're going to grow in God, you've got to realize that the attack means you are valuable. Mm -hmm. The attack means that there's some stuff not visible to the naked eye. The attack means God is up to something in your future. The attack means God is moving you to the head and not to the tail. He's getting ready to put you in the showcase and make other folk desire you. God, God, oh God, here God. Um, he says, so stop walking around talking about, amen, God has spoken. Got to you because you're being attacked. Stop walking around saying God is not honoring you because you gave your tithe, you paid your offering, you fasted, you prayed, and God still shut the door in the place of your desire. No, God had to do that because He wants to know are you following Him because of the reward? Come here, devil. He is the, the Bible says the devil is the accuser of the brethren. Y'all remember, amen, when He did the Job? He said, God, the only reason Job walks with you, the only reason to worship you the way he walks and worship is because you reward him. But you take away the reward and Job won't pay you no mind. He'll walk, he'll backslide out of church. And some folk have backslidden. Some folk have had their, their worship cramped. They come to church and sit down like they are lost in space. Call God or belong to zombie land. But I'm so glad. Oh, hallelujah. I'm growing in God. I'm growing in God. I'm growing Growing in God. Because even when he shut it down and hurt my feelings, me and my hurt feelings are still showing up on Sunday and saying, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be my mouth. Let me be honest in here. I went through something recently that hurt my feelings to the core because I was believing God with everything I had wanting my own way. You heard my confession? Yeah. I, I was believing God with everything I knew wanting my own way. And God shut the door. He come out of us. Uh, amen. Pray. And just when I was coming to grips with the shut door, amen, praise God, uh, amen, praise God, somebody who learned of the situation amplified it and says, well, you know, uh, block it. it's because of this or because of that, that. And all of a sudden, it hurt my character in God. Uh, and so now my feelings is hurt and my character is damaged. Uh, oh, God. And so I'm moping around, still worshiping, uh, worshiping, but in pain. I wish I had some real truth. Keep it in 100 cents. Uh, my hands going up, but my heart is still in pain. And I said, God, before I leave church this Sunday, this is the last Sunday I'm going to worship you in pain. This is the last Sunday I'm going to come here and shout over my pain. That Sunday when I preached the pain message, Lord have mercy. God said, now your work something. Now your value just went up. Now you come like a jewel in my hand. But I'm worth something. I'm worth something. And if you don't keep in your mind your worth, the devil make you feel worthless. It make you feel less than you are worth. And that's the worst feeling is to feel worthless. I can be broke, but if I feel like I'm worth something, I can deal with being broke. Amen. God, hallelujah. I can go through a rough spot, but I know I am worth something. God, I just say to myself, hang in there, self. It, it, it don't always go be like this. Sometimes you got to encourage yourself and say, oh, my worth is not in my car. Yeah. So the car break down and I got to take public transportation. 
condition. I'm still worth something. Getting on the bus. I wish I had a I wish this was something because I feel this all going to all over this place. We got to teach young folk that your worth is not in your car, it's not in your clothes, it's not in your cash, and it's not in your cribs. Mm -hmm. Oh God, have mercy. Hallelujah. Because they have, they think worth is net worth. Uh, uh, but it's net worth, um, but let you die and see how much that net worth is really worth. Mm -hmm. Lord, have mercy. Mm, God, no matter how much cash, one disaster can take it all away. Lord, have mercy. One disaster. Uh, Oh God, hallelujah. God, oh, I praise you. Listen, when I, I, I was in education and I used to amen, help students with admissions and adults with admissions. And I, I watched, uh, there was a young man, amen, praise God, I met and he was going to school, signed up for school, and ready to go to school. And and and, and I, I left him. I thought he went on to school. He started school. And I, six months or eight months later, I was driving in Spring Garden and and I saw somebody sit laying on a park bench and he, he, the face looked familiar. And I parked over, pulled over, looked at the park bench and it was him uh, with boxes underneath the park bench. And I, I got out of my car and walked over and I remember his name. I called him by his name. He answered. He looked at me because he didn't remember me. But I remembered him uh, because he was doing all right when I saw him last. And when I said to him, man, what happened? How did you end up here? Weren't you going to school? He says, yeah, but that's when I had hope. Jesus. He, he said, I had hope of a better future. Uh, but he said, a tragedy hit me and I lost everything and I lost hope. Hope, and he says, after I lost hope, I lost the ability to get up and go to work. I lost the ability to to live and to pay for the house. I lost the ability, and he says, my family stopped dealing with me, and my friends left me alone. And one day, I just never went back home. Jesus, I didn't know what to do because I had never been where he is. Yes, yes. I'm gonna say this to you: your net worth. It's not in your cash. It's not in your crib. It's not in your car. And it's certainly not in your clothes. Your worth has to be more than that. He kind of I'm done. Can we give God a real praise? Hallelujah.